Hi, it's Johnny Marks. Thank you so much for checking out the Marks in the Morning podcast. Remember, you can listen to myself, Carrie Mack, and JP weekdays from 6 to 10 live on K92.3. This is Marks in the Morning on K92.3. Can I get a countdown? Can I get a countdown? Three, two, one. It's Marks in the Morning back on Tuesday. It is the uh, 6th of April, 2021. And it's going to feel every bit like June 6th, more like it today, already in the 60s. As you heard Rebecca's forecast, it's going to be another warm one. Did you guys see some lightning when you were coming in today again? Yes, I did. Yeah, it woke me up, actually, this morning. It was like deja vu. I saw some yesterday on my drive in, and I thought, oh, that's weird. Lightning, no thunder, no rain. Same thing today. Very ominous. It is. But you know what? I'll take it, given our temperatures. I think we all will. Here's something else you can take. $10,000. We are off and running. With the cash cow. Uh, we're all set to go for another day here of code words and uh, the grand prize $10,000. If you like this kind of weather, you like this warm weather, win 10K, hang on to the money for a little bit, and when winter rolls around again here, because it will, go somewhere nice and warm. Take the whole family. Maybe get away to the beaches of Cancun if you're of age. That's probably not one for the kids. If you got the kids, you go to the beaches of Florida or California or somewhere fun. $10,000 will get the job done, and certainly by next winter. Uh, but more and more of those COVID restrictions will be lifted everywhere. So you can really get away and have a good old-fashioned time with the family. Or again, go by yourself to an all-inclusive resort. You don't even need to wait till winter for that. I've always wanted to go to one of those. $10,000 go a long way, get you there and back, and uh, plenty of money to spend all along the way. Cash cow code words throughout the day, starting at 8 o'clock. Grand prize, 10K. Other cash prizes as well each day. Uh, you guys have a good day yesterday. You enjoy the warm weather. You make the most of it. Anybody do anything outside after work? I did yard work. That was, it. And I, I grilled out in anticipation of the Cubbies were on last night, and they won, and then the National Championship yeah, yeah, men's yeah. basketball game. So I figured, ah, it's a good night to grill. Great night to uh, watch baseball as well. Carrie Mack, anything fun outside yesterday? Uh, nothing fun, but this will be my Tuesday blues day, I think. Oh, you got one already? Yeah, already. Right. I'm really upset with what happened last night. Okay, well, no, let's not. And you were upset yesterday with what happened Sunday with your food. So it's two for your over two. I need to play this for you, too. I don't even know what it is yet. I'm just always upset, honestly. Okay, <laughs> you're starting to sound like me. <laughs> uh, let's get right to it. Got a big show. Obviously, the cash cap. Pretty like that is on. It's Marks in the Morning. Thanks for checking us out. It's 6.13 on a Tuesday. We've got bull riding tickets. Too, coming up here uh, this hour, 6.35 the rest of this week. And we'll have some uh, to give away on a social media page. <coughs> uh, but check us out uh, on social media, by the way, for extra entries into the Cash Cow, uh, which is sponsored by Tubbs Ross. But, yeah, we got bull riding tickets this hour, 6.35. And for the rest of the week, we'll be giving away at 6.35 in the morning. The Coors Bull Riding Classic is coming up in a week. Not this week, but in a week, a week from uh, Friday and Saturday. It's the 16th and the 17th. Yep, that's a Friday and a Saturday at uh, the Hippodrome in Waterloo. So uh, we'll have more info on that in a little bit here, but can't wait to give those away. These guys uh, have never, have you, you guys ever been to a bull riding event? Did you go a couple years ago? It's been here every year since I've been here. It's been coming around for uh, usually in February, but they pushed it back with COVID this year. If I have, I don't remember. I think maybe when I was really young my parents would take me but other than that i don't i don't have any recollection of being at one no they're pretty fun my wife really wants to go and she said she whispers to me she said can i have a pair of those tickets i said that's against the rules you can't have a pair of those tickets but i'll ask the promoter i didn't ask the promoter i'm just (laughs) not gonna do that i'm just just gonna gonna buy a pair i'm not gonna do that what if you ride Oh. Then, then she'll hopefully have a good life insurance policy taken out of me because I don't think I'd survive. Eight would, seconds. Eight seconds. And you know what? If you watch it on TV, occasionally it'll show up. I know the, the PBR tournament. No, it's not the beer. It's the professional bull riding. The event. You'll see it happen. Somebody will make it eight seconds. But it's it's really unusual, and they look like they're miserable because they're getting bucked around. Have you ever ridden one of those electronic ones? Yes. yes. I mean, those yes. are tough, too. You think, yes. well, it's not a real bull. It's just going to be a pattern. Oh, but, awesome. man, you know, it's like you're a rag doll getting tossed around. And nobody does those sober. And you fall off you on are. padding, too. It's uh, If you're out yeah. actually riding a bull, you fall in the dirt. Mm. And instead of the rodeo clowns out there, you just got your drunken friend standing by. <laughs> hey, look, at, look at Steve. He's going for a ride. You've done it, Carrie? You've done the mechanical bull? Yeah, but when I was a little kid at like a state fair. Oh, we it had... doesn't count. Yes, it does count. It was a little bull, and I would fall over in this little... Uh, 
You know those bouncy castles? Yeah. Yes. They had that sort of fabric around the bowl. I've also never been to a bull riding uh, situation before. Okay. Well, I know you'll be there doing a broadcast. Yes, so I will be. I'll be riding be the bull. Sure. I think we should dress you up like one of the rodeo clowns when you go. I'm already a rodeo clown, Johnny. Oh, no. We'll dress you up like one. Then then, <laughs> then you can be in there without having to ride the bull. You just have to make sure that the, the guy who got bucked off is safe. Is that's that, your job. That's the job of the rodeo clown. Yeah. Well, I mean, they do have entertainment with the rodeo clowns, too, but... Like they'll, they're not all dressed like clowns, but you go out there with the, you know, when the guy gets thrown off, you don't want him to get attacked. Well, what would be worse, getting gored or stepped on? It's six thirty in the morning. Six six sixteen in the morning. It's six sixteen. Why am I? T- why are we talking about being gored? Because we're talking about bull riding. Being stepped on, probably. I think they usually trim up those horns a bit so they can't get gored. I mean, they'll still have the horn, but they'll trim them or like shave them down. Probably being stepped on. Uh, First same. of all, they, they they jump around, so you would get crushed. I would curl up in the fetal position and just wait for that rodeo clown to save my life. Get, get your butt out of there. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I would rather be trampled, yeah. <laughs> this is a happy moment. <laughs> That's why it's, 6, in the morning. it's 6.15. We're talking yeah. about being gored. I hope everyone's having a great morning so far. Enjoy your Cheerios. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine cheering for that? You see, you're like cheering, and then you see someone get well, trampled, and like, oh, and the cheers turn to silence. It's like going to a monster truck rally, right? You you know the trucks are going to jump and crush, but don't you secretly want them to roll over or somebody to get thrown out yeah. of the truck? Yeah, no. Exactly. My question is, are we rooting for the bull or are we rooting for the person? Well, remember, the bull, it's very competitive. The, the people that raise and breed those bulls, they want them to do well. They get that's their livelihood. You're just rooting for the bull not to hurt anybody. Yeah. Oh that's yeah. I definitely like don't want to see someone get hurt. No. But you do want to see good action, and we'll have tickets coming up here, six thirty five on Marks in the Morning. Random facts are some random facts. Well, April is Distracted Driving Awareness Month, or D D A M, but that doesn't have a nice ring to it. So, what is the number one distraction among drivers? Well, here in Iowa, our number one distraction, because, and this is so, I don't know, to me, this is so Iowa. This is so my father in law. Things you see happening outside the car, like, for example, when you're staring at somebody's field as you're driving by, which my father-in-law does on road trips, it drives everybody else in the car with him crazy. He will slow down and kind of start to veer towards a cornfield. <laughs> it's like oh it's God. like it's calling for yeah. him, and he'll always have a critique. Sometimes it's positive, like "Oh, those rows are really nice." Sometimes it's "Oh, that corn looks like it's, it should be a lot higher." And you're like, you know, we're on the road, we're in another state. Who knows what their weather patterns been? Like, go easy. Things happening outside the car. 39% of I would say that's the most distracting thing to happen to them while they're driving, which is good. It's not, you know, uh, your phone or the passenger or, God forbid, drinking. And, no, it's stuff outside the uh, outside the car. Number two is the passenger. People are uh, likely to complain that anybody under 45 are the main culprits. I don't know why under 45. I could see under, you know, like 20, but under 45, the main culprits. Uh, number three is your phone. Yep. Uh, we're still on our phones too much while we're driving. Although in some situations, it might be your GPS or maybe you're just, hey, siri your phone or OK Google or whatever it is you do. Even so, it counts as a distraction. And then trying to eat or drink something also made the list. Hopefully it's not like a giant burrito that spills rice and beans all over your lap. But I don't eat while I drive unless it's chips. We all know I have my car chips. Carrie Mac called me out on that to my wife. and But those are easy to eat. Although your hands get a little gross. Oh, I just I can't stand that like uh, not mildew, but that like uh, film that happens on your steering wheel after eating too many chips. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, you driving. experience this too. I always tell myself I'm not going to eat in the car. And then I eat in the car, and I tell myself, well, I won't spill on myself. And then I always spill on myself. And when you're driving, you can't clean yourself up. You just have to wait until you, you get just, to your you destination. Just deal with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, here's a strategy, Carrie, if that bothers you, the film. What I always will do, and I'm not making this up, I just had jalapeno chips in my car. And no, my wife doesn't like those, so I didn't feel guilty about eating them on, on the drive. 
What I'll do is I'll keep just a good old napkin or paper towel if I remember to grab one from the house. And then I'll eat the chip with my right hand. It sits in the passenger seat. I'm reaching over, eating it, and then I'll take the paper towel or napkin, and then help. it'll help me steer so I'm not getting I that. love how you have a system. I have I mean, you've thought this over. I have. The pandemic has done nothing but <laughs> disfortune to my waistline, and this is why. One thing I'll never eat while I drive. I tried having a McRib from McDonald's. Oh, my god! That gosh. was a huge mistake. Yeah, you cannot eat no. messy things. Uh, but one thing I'll never eat while I'm driving is a burger. <gasps> yeah, that's tough because sometimes, like, the condiments or, like, the tomato or the lettuce out. will come out. Oh, sometimes my it always does yeah. to me. And you know what? I want to enjoy those things. For me, it, it's like deep fried potatoes were meant to be eaten while driving, but a good piece of meat was meant to be appreciated. I agree completely. A burrito is the same way. I've yeah. tried eating a burrito in a car. Never worked out. I've tried never. eating chips and guac in a car. Never worked out. Sorry. A burrito in driving is a death sentence for your lap. It's just going to be beans and rice everywhere. Man, your car would smell good, though, afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> for the first few days, then it would really start to be not so good. Ice cream is another one. Oh, yeah. Tough to eat while driving. All right, we'll be back in a couple minutes. This is hard news, really, right? <laughs> and the real news is coming up. Our news director, Ellen Huffman, will join us. Rebecca Copelman with your Iowa's News Now weather first forecast and so much more on the way, including those bull riding tickets. I'm Evan. We've got tickets. To the Coors Bull Riding Classic back in the Cedar Valley at the Hippodrome coming up on Friday the 16th and Saturday the 17th. We'll have a pair of tickets which you can pick up right at the box. Uh, we'll call. No need to come here. No need to worry about waiting for them in the mail. They'll be at the box office for you. So we're going to do something super easy. I know it's early in the morning. Maybe the old brain is just on simmer right now as it warms up. It's not quite boiling. I get it. We're going to play a very simple game, game called Yes or Bull. I'm going to give you a statement, and you need to tell me if it's yes, true, indeed, factual, or bull. Like what we did there with bull riding. Bull. Yeah. All right. Here we go. 833-4985. I'll take um, our first caller here to call up at 833-4985. You got a one in two chance right out of the gate. Here we are. Let me see. Hi. Good morning. Who's this? Hi. This is Alan. Hi, Alan. Where are you calling from today? Jessup. All right, Alan from Jessup. Bull riding tickets on the line for the Coors Bull Riding Classic. Yes or bull? All I need from you is one of those two statements. Female mosquitoes are the mosquitoes that bite slash suck blood, and males do not. Yes or bull? Oh, bull. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Alan. Thanks for your call. Yep, Hi. females are blood suckers. They are. Hey, don't look at me when you say that. Hi, who's this? It's John. Hey, John, how are you doing this morning? Good. All right, I'm going to give you a question here. Yes or bull, once again. Uh, one in two chance to get it right. Yes or bull? Tug of war used to be a Olympic event. Tug of war. Yeah. Did you say yes? I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Very good. You got it. Congratulations. Indeed, it used to be an Olympic event. I wish they still had that. Wouldn't that be fun? That'd be a great winter Olympic sport. Do it on a mountain when it's all <laughs> icy and snowy. Yeah, or over a frozen pond and then the losing team falls oh, into the water. Oh, oh, oh. It could be the one that applies to all of them. I would love that. Yeah. The uh, It actually was in the Summer Olympics from the 1900s, or in the 1900s, from the year 1900 till 1920. The U.S. did well. We won three medals, including a gold. Yeah. So there you go. Congratulations, Ben. Where are you calling from this morning? Uh, Waterloo. Calling from Waterloo. And uh, you'll be sticking around in Waterloo to use these tickets at the Coors Bull Riding Classic. I want to put you on hold for just a sec. It's that easy. We'll do it again tomorrow. Yes or bull. You have a one in two chance to win those bull riding passes. Plenty more of these, these to give away. And more info on the event on the K92.3 app. Day for this show. Now, we're going to pull an Eric Church. We're going to go get our COVID vaccine, except we won't be on the cover of uh, any magazines. Eric Church on the cover of Billboard this month. Billboard magazine getting his vaccine right on the cover. Carrie Mack, myself, and JP are all going for our second shot at the Sportsplex here in Waterloo. I screwed up, though, didn't I? I'm not supposed to take an allergy pill, and I did. Well... I also drank last night. I'm not supposed to do that either. I, well, no, I no, I think you're okay with the alcohol. I think it's after the shot. Oh, okay. You can have, uh, not encouraging this, but you can have as much as you want before. Look, <laughs> uh, the science is the CDC has no recommendations when it comes to alcohol. So really, theoretically, you're fine. Ooh, good. You're fine. 
I took a shot before I'm taking my shot today. That's the plan, though. Can I do that? I wouldn't suggest that. You want to be polite and sober when you're in the, uh, you know, getting your shot. Of course. You don't squirm around too much. just falls flat on her face. (laughs) Well, you'll make it easy for them. (laughs) Uh, But from what I understand, we have this um, listed on our K92.3 app. Maybe I'll move it to the top of the page because I know with the COVID vaccine now available for all Iowans, 16 and older, we got a lot more people getting it. But um, there are some do's and don't do's. But they're only suggestions. An antihistamine, as you mentioned, is one. And the reason is it can block an allergic reaction that you might have. But you already had your first shot. You had no reaction other than maybe a little soreness. So you should be okay. But um, everybody in the office now has at least one vaccine except for one person. And I won't say their name on the radio. Yeah, I know. You know who it is. Oh, I thought you were waiting for one of us to say it. <laughs> no, no, no. Just so we'd don't be the bad it. guy. No, JP no, no. can say it. I won't say nobody, it, though. Nobody has to get it. We, I want to make sure you know, nobody's being forced to. And this individual wants to get it. They are just saying, oh, I'll do a call later. Like, okay. Uh, <laughs> putting things off. They're going to put it off until there's no more coronavirus. Hey, then there you go. Then yeah, they won't have to get the vaccine. worked out for them. <laughs> like, hey, did you get your vaccine, buddy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, we'll be. Uh, hopefully, we don't all have a bad reaction, and nobody's here tomorrow on the show. Who do the cash cow codes? Uh, intern Aaron. Oh yeah, he'd be the only one around. Yeah, good enough. Works for me. Should we just? <coughs> oh no, the vaccine. <coughs> all right, I'm out. No, <laughs> nothing. Nobody. You're not going to help me out here. I'll I thought you were commit- my patsies. I'll commit to it if you're committed yeah, to it. Yeah, if I show up in the morning and I don't see either of your cars, <laughs> I'm just going to keep driving and go home. There you go. <laughs> I feel like I'll show up because I'm like the newbie here yeah. trying to prove myself. I don't think you've uh, had a, a vacation day yet since you started, have you, Carrie? No, I haven't taken a single day off, Johnny. Well, that's good. That's good. That's my kind of work ethic there, my friend. All right, we have, I uh, just hinted at it, we have our cash cow. Yes, a chance to win. $10,000, whether you are interested in being vaccinated or not, you can get yourself on a nice beach somewhere. Get away for you and yours. If you have kids, maybe you haven't taken a vacation since the pandemic. You probably haven't. I mean, maybe you've taken a road trip somewhere. Um, and maybe that's what you choose to do again. Hop in the car. Get everybody in the car. Maybe rent a vehicle so you don't put the miles on your car. Yeah, then leave the kids there and you come back oh, home. <laughs> South Dakota, familiar faces. Here you go. Look at them for a while. We'll be back next year. Uh, but wherever you want to go, maybe a little Midwest trip. Hit the lakes of Minnesota, maybe South Dakota for the uh, Mount Rushmore. Uh, you can go to North Dakota. God knows why you'd want to go there, but maybe that's where you want to go. Anyways, check out um, the K92.3 app for all the info. And as we talked about yesterday, yeah, cash cow, it's your chance to win up to $10,000. But there are other cash prizes each day. So any one of those codes could be worth moolah. The first one's at 8 o'clock. You'll need the app. Tap the cash cow button. And in the morning, Tuesday, blues day. What's got you feeling blue today? Cedar Valley. Yeah. Well, that makes me look stupid. And that's what it's all about. It's Tuesday Blues Day. At the top of the show, Carrie Mack insisted that she had a Tuesday Blues Day, and yesterday you would have had one from Sunday, but now we have a new one from Monday. Is that right? Exactly. This is a Tuesday Blues Week, I oh, think. Oh, no, it'll turn around. What oh. happened? Well, I I have a, uh, a security gate for my parking lot, mm. and I tried entering the code to get in there, and it said, oh, incorrect. And I was like, okay, this happens to me sometimes. I get a bit of a blonde moment and I forget what's going on. I, it happened to me all the time in high school. I would always forget the locker combo. Oh, no. So I tried entering a different variation. Didn't work. I tried it again. Didn't Mr. work. Mr. Performers. Oops. Sorry about that. That's my Tuesday Blues Day. <laughs> I'm hitting buttons. Okay. So you tried it again. <laughs> well, uh, and it just didn't work. So, sorry, I lost my train of thought. How many numbers is it you have to punch in? It's four numbers, and it's su- it's usually super easy. I remember, like, the back of my hand, but I don't know what it was. It wasn't working, so I kept pulling out and going around oh, and trying Carrie, to pull back in. Was there somebody behind you? Well, f- the first time there wasn't, but the second time there was. <laughs> you know, then, you, you, sh- you should have gotten behind them and just floored it when they got in. Well, 
here's the thing. I pulled back around the third time, and a guy was stuck in there, and he was having the same problem I was. Oh, okay. So it wasn't just it you. It wasn't just me. So did they ch- They must have changed their code and not told everybody. Maybe. I have no clue. But when I came back uh, later, the, the gate was up. Okay. When you came back later, what did you do? You just kept driving and driving and driving and driving? Well, I went for a little drive. Oh, my God. Because you had to. You <laughs> couldn't get in. Why didn't you just go up to the front? You're staying at a hotel, so somebody's always going to be at the front. Why didn't you just go up and say, hey, you know I'm, I've am i been living here. Can you please help me with the gate, a.k.a. you changed the code and didn't tell me. That's like being nice and blaming yourself for something that's probably their fault. Because the guy in front of me was doing that. Oh. Well, why didn't you? Okay. What do you mean? Couldn't what question you, do you, you have? Can't you just park somewhere else? I did park somewhere else <laughs> yeah. eventually. I'd rather do that than just keep driving around. <laughs> oh, well, that is definitely a touch of the blues. Now, Sunday, if people weren't listening to the show yesterday, your blues day was you ordered food at like 4.30, and by 7, it took until 7 before they told you it wasn't available. Yeah, I, it took me three hours to be rejected. <laughs> oh, Wait, man. you ordered the food, and then three hours later, they said, nope? It was on Grubhub or one of those? I don't want to give any uh, stuff to anyone, but uh, I Oh, ordered- you can say the app. <laughs> But we won't say the restaurant. But it was Grubhub, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Grubhub. I ordered it at like 4.30, and the restaurant didn't open until 5.15. Did you know this? Yes, I okay. knew that. So I was like, okay, I understand. They said it would arrive at 6. And I was like, this, this is okay. But then around 7 o'clock, I noticed that the arrival time is 8 o'clock. Mm-hmm. And then they just canceled because I DM'd them on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, that, everywhere. That one I, is totally on them because, first of all, it shouldn't have been an option if the restaurant's not open. Second of all, it should have been immediate that they said either we're so backed up and or we're not going to fulfill this. It shouldn't have been like when they opened, so five, whatever. It shouldn't have been seven. Yeah. So that one I totally get. The driving around in circles for a while, I don't know if I get Well, I, I, I ended up, I did park, and then I went into the hotel, and I waited an hour because yeah. I, I went back out there, and the, the gate was up. Well, I tell you what. It's a roundabout way of saying it because I got distracted. You so. know, if this happens again, you can always come visit us because uh, you know where we live. I know where you live. And that way I can... Poke fun at you when you come over and say, "Oh, well, Carrie forgot fun. the code yeah. again. That's why she's coming over." You It'll always poke fun at me. Show. It's mutual. All right, JP and I. I don't think we have one. Do you? Ah, we, I was all. trying to rack my brain, and I think it's been a good week so far. See, all of our bad things are happening to Carrie, so oh, therefore we're having a good week. I'm sorry, Carrie. What's yeah. it like? What's it like to have a good life, guys? The twins have been winning. I mean, they smoked the Tigers yesterday, like. Good old cheese, aged cheese. Uh, the Cubs have been winning, have they not? Yeah, they're in first place. So there you go. No no blues there. Keep it up. All right, let's get to your messages. Tap the message. Well, you have a couple options. Tap the message button, and you can write us a message, which we'll, we'll read on a Tuesday Blues Day, or you can tap the Be On The Radio button right there on the home screen of the app, and we'll get to your messages. What you got? It's uh, Tuesday. Oh, well, by the way, before I play this, I don't have a name because, again, it doesn't tell us your name uh, if you record a message. So please include that if you want a shout out. It bugs me when I'm out to dinner with friends and there's always that one friend who just can't be present. Like he's got to be or she has to be on their phone. Like they, they look down the phone and they're not in the conversation and we're having dinner and, and they just kind of go silent. And they don't look at you, and it, it's just irritating. Like, I want to have a conversation with a human being, not a robot. So to all those people out there who, who think that's appropriate, no, no, no. No cell phones at the dinner table. I would agree with that. I would agree with that Tuesday, Blues Day. No cell phones at the dinner table. I agree completely. I. He's talking about adults, but when you have children who don't have cell phones because they're too young... What kind of message does it send to them if you're on your phone and not paying attention to everybody, right? It's it's just a good thing to get in the habit of being present. It sets a bad example. And I've noticed that, again, people who are around my parents' age are the ones who are doing it all the time. Are your folks pretty addicted to their phones? Oh, my gosh. My mom's on Bejeweled Blitz. My dad is sending (laughs) Facebook memes all the time. I hate how you're having a conversation with someone and all of a sudden mid conversation they whip out the phone, start dinking around on it. Yeah. And then you have to repeat the same story because they weren't paying attention. I What'd hate you how say? 
<laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I was playing Boom Beach. Uh, I hate how when you're doing a Tuesday Blues Day, I'm working on a promo for Taste of Country Nights. God, that drives me nuts. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry about up, that, Carrie. Drives me up the wall. It, uh, you know what? We've got so many messages, and we've talked for too long because it's 7:25, and we have to get to Gender Bender, which is 10 minutes away. And we, I want to make sure you get your news and weather before that. So we'll stop right there, but we'll we'll keep these in the uh, bank here and get them on the air next week. Appreciate your messages tuesday blues day may only happen tuesday mornings but you can record or write us a message anytime with yours and we'll uh, give it to the world and share it with the cedar valley on an upcoming tuesday blues day back in just a moment on the mighty k92 3 we've got gender bender sponsored by jay's homestyle cooking it's time to play gender bender on marks in the morning hey johnny marks who are our contestants today i'm excited for this round of gender bender because we have a couple of very motivated returning players we have ashley calling in from fairbank ashley how are you today Good. Glad to hear that. Your opponent is Jason from LaPorte City. Jason, how are you doing? Doing good. I'm glad to hear that as well. And very excited to see who has the better score when we're done. We have a tie this year. It's men and women at 30 wins apiece. The guys have crawled back and could take a lead for the first time since Ooh. early February. Yes, that's right. I kept track. I take screenshots. I had to dig through my phone. I had a screenshot of our scoreboard. Anyways, that's not important. What's important is today's game. Ashley, you are our first caller. Are you going first or is Jason? I'll go first. All right. You'll each get three questions. Ashley first. And then whoever has the better score wins. We have a tiebreaker if we need to. Good luck. Ashley, tell me how many states are spelled with just four letters? How many states? Ah. I'll say three. You are absolutely correct. Iowa's one. Yeah, we've got one. Ohio and Utah. That would have taken me a long time to think of, Ashley. Congratulations on getting it that fast. I was about to give it, I was going to give her multiple choice, but the last minute I'm like, nah, let's let her earn this. And she got it. Nice work. All right. Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, Gettysburg Address rather, started with four score and seven years ago. How many years is a score? Is it 5, 10, or 20? Uh, I'm going to guess on this. What was the multiple choice? 5, 10, or 20 years. How many is a score? Let's say 20. You are absolutely correct. Yeah. Yes. Way to go. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln would have been talking right to you, Ashley. You would have totally known what he was talking about. Ashley, to go perfect, what restaurant uses the slogan, Wings, Beer, Sports? Buffalo Wild Wings. You got it. Nicely done. Yep. Also, you got uh, JP's Man Cave. That's the slogan, right? Beer, Uh, wings, sports. Oh, man. And then there's a fourth one, kids. (laughs) 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 All right. A perfect score is beatable, uh, Jason, but you'll have to tie her first and win in the tiebreaker. Good luck. Okay, Jason. Can you tell me what state has the most letters in it? That's not two words like New, New, New York or New Jersey. So what state has the most letters in it? Um, Mississippi. Massachusetts. Mississippi's a great guess. All right. Johnny's doing doing the math in my head. All right. Well, let's see how he does with the other questions here. What do you call a cross between a one piece and a bikini? Is it a tankini or a onesie and one? Tankini. Yeah. I've never heard of that term before. Tankini. I've heard a mankini. <laughs> <laughs> Which is worse. Well, I think the mankini. Okay, what pizza chain uses the slogan, better ingredients, better pizza? Papa John. Yes. Nice job. But just by one letter and one point, unfortunately, our winner this morning is Ashley. There's only one letter yeah, difference Ashley. between Massachusetts yeah. and if Mississippi? I, if I counted that right, which... I might not have, but there's definitely a discrepancy there, so it was close. But uh, congratulations, Ashley. Hey, Jason, you can certainly call us back and try again any time this week. We've got plenty more rounds to go, okay? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jason. Have a great day. Ashley, what's up this morning? Are you going to work, or what you got going on today? Yep, headed to work. All right. Well, at least you'll have something to talk about at work with the rest of the folks there. One, two, three. The Cedar Valley's number one for new country. It's going to be a beautiful day. You heard uh, Rebecca's forecast. Already 60 degrees. Heading for a high today, right around 80. So look out. Uh, my block's going to be busy, full of people walking. I have, uh, on our block, we have a lot of people that come and they walk, even if they're not from the neighborhood. 
you'll see them park or whatever, and then just walk in. I always, <laughs> and it gets mad because I always shake my fist and go, walk somewhere else. Not to their face. Get off my lawn. Get off my lawn. But then I go out and walk just like they do and walk around other people's neighborhoods too. So uh, I'm kind of a hypocrite. I like to go down by the river and walk down by the river. And sometimes, it's going to sound goofy, but sometimes when I'm on my walk, I like to pretend that I'm an investigator on like one of those crime shows. <laughs> and like if there's going to be a body that just floats up in the river, which would actually be absolutely horrifying if it ever actually happened. But sometimes as I walk by, unless there's people there and I'm muttering to myself, they probably think I'm nuts. But like, hmm, well, his wallet's over here. His keys are over here, and his arm is over there. Judging by Where's the tracks, the he must weigh 180 <laughs> yeah. pounds, and it looks like fresh mud. Hmm. You guys are such nerds. Get your trench coats. We're going to solve a murder. You guys are such nerds. Get it right. <laughs> <laughs> it was this. It was the jealous ex-husband. It was the butler in the basement with the candelabra. <laughs> there you go. All right. It's 817, and Carrie Mack is thinking about taking the plunge and getting something that will be permanent with her forever. Yes, I'm talking about... Marriage. <laughs> taxes. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, marriage... Isn't necessarily forever. JP, you've taught us that. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> no, I'm talking about a tattoo. Yeah. Which you have a couple of yourself, James. Yeah, I have two cubbies and the Packers on my legs. You ever regret, if they ever had a season where you go, oh, I just wish I could have this removed? No. No. No, because I, I knew when I got it. Well, obviously, tattoos permanent unless you get the laser removal. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm always going to be a fan. Some people have said, what if they move? What if Green Bay moves to Minnesota? Oh. I'm like, well, then I'd cut my leg off. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and send it to a fan in Minnesota, yeah. of course. Oh, no. No, I'm always going to be their fan, even if they change team names. There you go. That's the leg that you found by the river. There, there it is. Mm -hmm. It all comes full circle. I knew that was a tattoo. I thought it was a bullseye. Uh, so Carrie is thinking about getting a tattoo. And you correct me if I'm wrong. You have none as we speak. None I right have now. none. The only tattoos I have are freckles, pretty much. <laughs> what is the part of your body you're looking to get? Before we get into what you want to get, because, of course, you're asking for help on that. But what? where are we looking to put this? I've been kind of torn because I'm... I'll be honest, I gained a few pounds with quarantine, so I'm trying to slowly lose some weight. Mm. Uh, just for me, this isn't for anybody else. So I'm nervous that if I get a tattoo somewhere where there's, how should I say it, there's a lot of fat, I'll, <laughs> it'll change shape over time because a friend of mine actually got a Tweety Bird on her butt once, and <laughs> after a few kids, it ended up looking like a lemon. Oh, what is Tweety Bird's, does he say? He I saw, say I saw a putty tag. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> you know what he sees now. <laughs> I thought I was 11. <laughs> so you're, okay, so this may not be right away, I guess, is yeah. kind of what you're saying. You're, but you're really putting a lot of thought into it. Yeah. And I, I'm kind of torn because I would love to get it on my wrist, but I'm also nervous because, like, I have this job in radio where you can kind of show your tattoos sometimes. But if I'm ever in an important meeting or something, I want to be able to cover them up. Or if you're not working in radio, you know, yeah, there could be some employers who do not want any tattoos shown at all. Is this yeah. your hint on being let well, go? No, like Intern <laughs> Skyscraper, we were talking about yeah, tattoos could, yesterday, and he told us, what, he had 13, yeah, he had 8? I believe it. Oh, I've my gosh. Seen, we have never seen one. Never seen a single one on him. And we asked him, you know, respectfully, are they all in... Okay, you know, like, are they in places that people would be able to see him? And he said, oh, yeah, none of them are in, like, you know, private areas. It's just been winter time, so he's, you know, been wearing a sweatshirt yeah. and pants, so we've never seen him. Does he, he didn't, just doesn't, he's not here today. That's why we're, we're talking like this. I don't know why he's not in the room. He just doesn't seem like the tattoo kind, does not he? Not at all, no. Not at all to me, either. I agree. I was also told that I don't look like the tattoo kind of person. You don't. I would agree with that. You To me, you don't. Yeah. But that's not to say if I met you with one, I would have that. I would probably just completely have not had it's, those thoughts. That's an oddity to judge people that way, too. It's just like you seem like the person that wouldn't get a tattoo. I'm like, well, what does that mean? Yeah. But more, of, I'm thinking more for Carrie's personality. That is, I'm not saying you wouldn't, it wouldn't work on you. But, like, yeah, I would never see you with a saying. Like with, a, like oh, a small, like, a short like live, sentence. laugh, love on my wrist. Yeah. And I don't I, see it. No, I don't know because I've... I kind of want to do something with like family members who have passed away. I would love to do some like handwriting of theirs somewhere on my body, which I think is very important because I love the meaning behind tattoos because that's so that's such a beautiful thing to permanently have something that means so much to you a part of your body. What about barbed wire? Oh, that'd be cool. Around your bicep. Wasn't that a big thing in the 90s that guys would get those like, yeah, tribal, tattoos? tribal tattoos? Yeah, the tribal tattoos. Yeah, I had a lot of friends that get that. Yeah, look like Bill Goldberg, the wrestler. Well, Carrie, 
is looking for ideas here. Can you point us in the right direction? What do you absolutely not want? Do you not want words or am I way off here? I, I, I don't know. My big thing is I don't want them on certain spots of my body. Like okay. I don't want a tramp stamp. I I Come can't commit to a tramp on, stamp. Katie. Johnny's got a tramp yeah, stamp. I have. It's a butterfly. <laughs> How'd you know? Oh, that's I've seen right. it. Yeah. We, oh, geez. That's another bending, story. He wears his Speedo in the summer, so yeah. I, sometimes I've seen that. Well, I was stand. bending over to change the score on Ginger Bender today. <laughs> JP dropped a quarter down there. Oh, no. Which you ain't getting back, brother. It's fine oh, no. now. Better than sliding a debit card out. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you would. I, I had a skimmer installed. Oh, my God. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> we, can go, we can go at, at this all day, Carrie. Um, I, I, I don't want something too basic, but I want something that's kind of small small uh something that's meaningful but it's it's a, it's a tough decision to get something permanently etched onto your body for the rest of your life what do you think carrie should get now we have this posted on facebook in a slightly different fashion we want to know the story behind your tattoo and in doing so it'd be great if you could if you could if you have a photo of it please don't do this while you're driving but if you have a photo please post that to our Facebook page, if you're okay with, not if it's somewhere that's going to get you kicked off Facebook. Yeah, keep it but, PG, people. But, um, you know, give us a sentence or two about the meaning. Maybe it's somebody's name. Maybe it's a, a son or a daughter or a family member. Hopefully one that's still around, but maybe one that's passed on. Uh, obviously that wouldn't work for Carrie, but certain ideas would, like the tribal tattoo. You should get the words, this is a tattoo, tattooed on your body. But backwards, so if you don't look at it in a mirror, it makes no sense. I've been really tempted to do this, where I get the words, your face, tattooed on my rear. So I can go up to people and tell them, hey, I have my face tattooed on my rear. Yeah. Oh, I get you. Uh, (laughs) I wouldn't do that. I'm not going to do that, but that's a funny joke. Come on. You didn't think my butterflies were a good idea. Why would you think that? Oh, it's plural now. You have more than one butterfly. I thought there was only one. Yeah, you got to look harder, buddy. (laughs) (laughs) Let us know. No, thanks. I'm good. (laughs) If you just got the K92.3 app, if you're entering those cash cow code words, you can use it to message us. If you already have the app, you're familiar, you tap the message button, and you can send us a message right to the studio or post it on social media. We'd love to hear from you. Ideas for tattoos. Maybe they're ones you have or one you have or ones you want to get. Let us know. We'll be back in just a couple minutes here with News and Weather on Marks in the Morning. Also, uh, Justin Lynch, he's on the Here on the uh, show at this hour, what we do at, in the 8 o'clock hour, usually about 8.35, 8.37, somewhere in there, we do a history lesson. History piece gives us that history lesson. Now, today is, uh, we're not even a full week into April yet. We've already had a couple of great history lessons. So there's no pressure for you to top it. We had one earlier in the week when baseball season started about the first woman to really ever throw a pitch in baseball. She struck out, struck out Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. What you got for us today, JP? Today is the 90th birthday of the Twinkie. Oh, that is pretty good. Cr- and it's still fresh. That's the thing. Oh, about that I, I'm glad you brought that up because Twinkies do not have an end of the world shelf life. What? 26 to 45 days. But still... Think of it, though. That's over three weeks. Yeah. So you could have a Twinkie in a box and let it sit there for about a month, and it could still be considered fresh, I suppose. Do you know how the Twinkie came to be? Either of you? Do you know the history behind I, the Twinkie? Afraid not. I thought there was... I thought they were originally banana-filled for the war or for, like, World War II or something as... Yeah, there was a guy who was making strawberry shortcakes, but and they were putting strawberry filling in them, but only during strawberry season. You know, yeah. you couldn't get strawberries shipped to you year-round like we do now back in the 1930s. So this guy thought, well, what if I put cream inside of this Twinkie, inside of this golden sponge cake? And he did, and the rest is history. He came up with the name Twinkie because he saw a billboard that said the Twinkle Toe Shoe Company. Uh, And he liked the word twinkle, and he called it Twinkie. That is ingenious. Mm -hmm. That's cool. What else could you call him? Cream-filled heart attacks? I mean, nothing else has the same ring as Twinkie. A spongy cake with cream? Yeah, Twinkie's yeah. just... It is a perfect name when you think about it. Yeah. I used to... I haven't had a Twinkie in years, but I used to... This is how I would eat them. I would freeze them. I'd oh, yeah? stick them in the freezer, make sure they're hard as a rock, and that's how I would eat them. You, what does the cream taste like when the Twinkie's frozen? It, it is hard. I mean, it's just <laughs> frozen solid, but it, I, that's how I loved to eat them as a kid. If I tried that now, my teeth would probably fall out. <laughs> oh, probably. But, yeah. man, they were good. 
Weren't they all taken off the shelf for a while? Yeah, when yeah, Hostess went bankrupt in 2012, yeah. they you couldn't find them anywhere for like six, eight months. Yeah, it wasn't because there was anything wrong with them. They were just, they didn't have a manufacturer. But right. somebody swooped in and saved the day, and now the Twinkie has returned. And I believe they have had strawberry variations in more recent years. Yeah, it didn't go over well, though, believe no. it or not. You think it would, but no. Well, it's kind of like when Oreo does 80 million different flavors. You always go back to the original, and even though the original may have had strawberry, the one that the world got to know is the one now that we like to joke lasts forever, but apparently it doesn't. So oh. thanks, James. Yep, happy birthday to the Twinkie. 90 years ago today it was created. Betty White still older than the Twinkie. This <laughs> yeah, that's right. wonderful. That's crazy. All right, back in a couple minutes with Carrie Underwood and Blanco Brown's on this track with Parmalee, a number one hit for them. It's called Just the Way, plus Nashville News and another Cash Cow code word. Let's see if I can do this a la Jeopardy here. Georgia born singer songwriter went to work for Preserve Tomato Products Company. What is Sam Hunt's ketchup? Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love the before and afters on Jeopardy where they have to combine two things. Yeah. Sam Hunt was indeed born in Georgia, and the Hunt's Tomato Company is not in any way related to Sam Hunt, but still fun to think. By the way, Sam Hunt, you hear about him, obviously, from time to time in the news for uh, being a singer, being on tour. He's supposed to be at the Iowa State Fair this year. He's also a songwriter, and he's written songs for artists like Reba McIntyre. I don't know if a lot of people think about that, but on Reba's album from 2017, he wrote a song that was a number one hit called Love Somebody. So Sam Hunt is uh, not just a singer. He also does a lot of songwriting. Maybe less now for other artists and more for himself, but... He's uh, quite uh, proficient. By the way, he does have a cover of Reba's song, Fancy, that's worth checking out. The meaning of the song may be a little lost on Sam Hunt performing it, but it nevertheless is pretty powerful. All right, good news for you if you are uh, behind on your cash cow code words. we got eight more of them today. Sponsored by Tubbs R Us, each code is a chance to win some money, and the grand prize is a lot of moolah. It's $10,000. There's that home improvement project. It's been on the back burner. Maybe literally the back burner needs to be replaced on your stove. Uh, get ahead, get caught up, and get all the projects taken care of with a $10,000 grand prize. The other cash prizes aren't bad either. You have a chance to win every hour right up through the uh, end of the workday. We'll have a code, myself or Carrie, right up through 5 o'clock, the next one at 10. All right, we have a, a new student of the week we're very excited about. The student of the week award is given every week. I think we did have to miss a week because of spring break, but we try to give one away every single week. It's sponsored by not only our friends at the Waterloo Public Schools, but um, across the street here at Screaming Eagle. You win, or your student wins more specifically, they get a free meal at the Screaming Eagle and unlimited ski ball while you eat. Who's our winner today, Carrie Mack? Well, our winner today, week, yeah, for this week, it's Mylea. Again, I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing this. This is totally on us uh, for not getting the pronunciation down. But she is a fourth grader at Lincoln Elementary. She, the the uh, the nomination form said nothing but good things about her. She's made some major strides in all of her academics, especially in her math class, which is more than some of us can say. <laughs> yeah. Two plus two is four. Beyond that, don't ask. I'll have to take my shoes off. Two plus three equals six, I assume. Uh, she's not only a great student, but according to the nomination sheet, she is a great person. She is kind and caring and treats her fellow students and teachers with all the respect that they deserve. And we even have a quote here. We sometimes even call her our mini teacher because she is so great at being a leader and helping out in the classroom. That's sweet. And you said when she goes to Lincoln, you said Lincoln Elementary? Yes, Lincoln Elementary. You can see the full story and the full profile on her on the K92.3 app and on our website. We'll be posting this on Facebook very soon, but it's great that we're finally recognizing a fourth grader because we've had some younger kids and some older kids, but no one's smack dab in the middle. Nadia is a winner. Ellie was a winner. We had Tate a couple weeks back, Arnella, Chloe, and uh, Sam, our oldest student winner from uh, East High School. Nominate a student that you know who deserves to be a student of the week. Not only do we talk about him on the radio, but Carrie puts together a nice little package for him on the K92.3 app and website. It's there forever. And they can go back. You can embarrass him with it when they're uh, getting married one day and, or running for president one day. And uh, to nominate somebody, you can go to Malia's post and find the nomination form there. Otherwise, if you're on the app, there's just a button that says nominate student. It's a very short entry form. And uh, we do ask for a photo, so please be aware of that. It used to be we'd go to the school and take a photo with the kid, but uh, we can't do that with COVID. So please send us a photo that we can use on our post. All right, coming up in just a couple minutes, we'll go from something sweet and heartwarming to somebody who probably did something stupid. I'm talking about Weird News Rodeo. There it is. 
JP, can you give us a tease? It involves driving a state trooper's car. Oh, this is never good when mm-hmm. somebody steals one of these. Wow. So we'll find out what happened in just a few minutes on Mark's 22 specifically. But it's time for Weird News Rodeo. Let me hear it. Wow. Yeah, it's your chance to um, get some, uh, I don't know if I'd call this water cooler talk, but certainly a story that you could share with somebody else in the office if they're now listening to our show themselves. <laughs> No, tell me about it. JP, what's our Weird News Rodeo story? A man in handcuffs led Kansas police on a 100 miles per hour chase in a stolen patrol car over the weekend. No. The 23-year-old, who happens to be from Florida, no surprise, was in the squad car. He was being taken to jail. So the trooper witnessed, the trooper who was hauling this guy witnessed a motorcycle crash on the highway. So he did the good thing. He stopped to see if they needed any help. And while the trooper was assisting with the motorcycle crash, the handcuffed prisoner scooted over behind the wheel of the patrol car and took off. Uh. Uh. After 30 minutes, the car ran out of gas. Prisoner tried taking off on foot, still handcuffed, but he was quickly caught. He was arrested and taken to jail without further incident. No one was injured. Well, he was already in the squad car. Yeah. (laughs) So if you're wondering, how did he get from the back seat to the front seat? I am wondering that. There there was no cage in the back seat, so the officer had him sitting riding shotgun in the passenger seat. So once the officer got out, he just scooted over. I don't know how he put it in drive because his hand he was handcuffed behind. So how was he driving? He was using his knees to steer. You know what? Well, yeah. you know what I was thinking is some cars have the uh, the, the gear the shifter on the uh, steering wheel. He could have bumped it with his knee because you probably have to have one foot on the brake, right? I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. So if, he he was driving 100 miles per hour with his knee, probably one knee because he was the other one was gassing it. I've never heard of a squad car without the cage in it. That's what I thought, too. And I thought, well, maybe they were getting it fixed. But if that's the case, why were they even transporting a prisoner anyways without a cage in the back? This is a question I ask not because I'm curious if you've been arrested, but curious if you've ever been on a ride-along for a radio station or anything. Have you ever been in a squad car at going at a high rate of speed? I have not. I have haven't you? either. Oh. No, I haven't either. Sure. I was... No, no, I, ha- I for other reasons, no, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I have been... I never. I was offered several ride-alongs, and I just never did one because uh, a couple of the police officers in the town I used to work in, they were nice enough to let me. Would, were working late, and I was always doing mornings. But I imagine they have a lot of giddy up. And if you're not used to the way they handle, I don't know because I've never driven one. But I assume they're very fast, powerful cars. So it's a good thing this wasn't a terrible accident, especially the guy had no hands to use. Sounds like this will be the last car he'll be driving for a while. I mean, he was already on his way to prison, then he steals a trooper's car in Kansas. What a story he'll have to tell his fellow inmates. Mm -hmm. What are you in in for? Well, first of all, whatever. And next, I saw a squad car. While handcuffed. handcuffed. Driving with my knees. Never give up on your dreams. (laughs) If your dreams is to escape the law, never give up. The good news is they caught the guy. The bad news is Vin Diesel's going to play him in a movie. So he's going to be very famous. (laughs) Not surprised. (laughs) Next, Fast and Furious. All right, we'll be back on Mark's in the Morning in just a few minutes here with news and weather. Also, uh, Jordan Davis coming up. I'm Ed. Lee Gilbert. Mark's in the morning is on K92.3. It is 9.38. It is uh, already 68 degrees heading for a high today. Just pushing above 80. Love it. Get outside. See your community. Walk around. If you live or work near a park, go check it out for lunch today. Go make uh, make an appointment to be outside. Make an appointment to be us with us at the top of every hour while you are. Those cash cow code words, we can't repeat them. We, we did tell a couple people. A couple people yesterday, they said, I missed a code not today. We can't repeat any of them. Once they leave the uh, whatever host is given it, myself or Carrie Mack, for the rest of the day, we can't say them again until the next code. Then you'll get a different one. Uh, so don't miss a single one. Sponsored by Tubs R Us. It's your chance to win up to $10,000. Take the family on a nice vacation this summer or hold on to the money and save it uh, for this winter and get away when a beach will seem that much more appealing. You see, you, if you follow the scandal with um, it's Lori Laughlin, the celebrity, she used to be on the show Full, Full House. House. And then I think, did she do the Fuller House before she got in big trouble? Yeah, she was on Fuller House. She was on all of the Hallmark movies, too. Yeah. She and her husband got in big trouble for the college admissions scandal where they blah, 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 paid to get their daughter in. We all know the story. Her husband's already out of prison. He only served five months. And I thought what was really weird is as soon as they let him out, he said, five months away from them, this was a, this was like a reward. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it out. Ah, thank you. Thank you. (laughs) 
Did what? she serve any? <laughs> did she go to prison at all? Uh, three months, okay. right? Yeah. Three months. And she's done now too. Yeah, she said when they let her out, she said, "Put me back in." Okay. Yeah, I haven't been following that story since it since I knew they were in the wrong, and because I figured even though they went to prison. It wasn't prison, prison. Probably not. It, it was, was probably wherever, cushy room prison. Right. Wherever Martha Stewart went yeah. for a couple of months. Probably some yoga trouble. classes, some uh, gluten-free food. <laughs> she probably had toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. It's true. They, did it, they didn't have a toilet paper shortage in prison, I don't think. Uh, but here's a story, an interesting story for you. Then we're going to move on and we'll get to our last Nashville News Minute, the next Cash Cow Code Word in 30 Minutes Nonstop Country. Ba- uh, this one slipped through the cracks. I know I fell for uh, that stupid April Fool's joke from, um, what's his name? Michael was Strahan. Michael Strahan, thank you. Yeah, you thought he was getting the gap fixed between yeah, his teeth. and that was I just fell a- for it. But he yeah, talked but about it. On your behalf, though, he started this prank two days before April yeah. Fool's Day, and he didn't reveal it until April 1st. I don't, yeah, and I think we talked about it in March sometime, like you said. Anyways, this is one we didn't talk about on the show, but it might actually be coming true. On April 1st, yes, they did it as an April Fool's joke. Heinz, the tomato ketchup company, they tweeted along with uh, sister company Ocean Spray, a new product called Cravy, which is exactly as it sounds, a gravy, cranberry juice Uh. mix-up, mash-up, I guess. It would be pinkish brown and flavored like both of those products. It was obviously an April Fool's joke, but the popularity on Twitter was so strong with over 250,000 people who need hobbies saying that they should make it real that they then decided that they would maybe do it. They haven't confirmed this yet, but here's their tweet. Let me see if I can find this here. Okay, now that's their original tweet. They haven't followed up, but the voting ends uh, on Thursday, so you can still go and vote. It's not even close, though, right now. Like four? It's, it, people want it more than no. the nays? Yeah. See, well, I, could, I, I love gravy. I love cranberries for Thanksgiving and Christmas, but combining the two, uh, that's not a good idea. I, I take that back. They, they need 250,000 people to do it. So I'm, I apologize. They need to get to 250000 So you'd vote against it? I would. It, it'd be a gimmick. It'd probably end up costing more to make it and bottle it and ship it than people would actually buy it. Oh, yeah. And can it, would it be shelf-stable? Oh, or does it go in the fridge? That's a yeah. good question. But all, honestly, it all goes into the same place. <laughs> well, yeah, if you yeah. want to get really technical. Okay, when you sit down for Thanksgiving with your family and you get the cranberry sauce and you get gravy and potatoes, you don't mix it all together. No, but you some, eat them separately. Yeah, sometimes you should, it anyways. messes together on the plate. Yeah, though. sometimes. But does it taste good when it's all mixed together? No. no. It, okay. Well, uh, maybe, I, maybe I hate, if, you, if you think so, it doesn't taste bad. I enjoy it. I don't. Gravy is usually warm. Cranberry sauce is never. Well, not not in the temperature gravy is again if it touches something maybe but just the thought of those two together doesn't sound appetizing. It looks disgusting. The yeah. fake can that they rigged up looks <laughs> disgusting, and the concept of a fruit juice or at least some percentage of real fruit juice mixed with like some sort of animal because it's usually what turkey gravy, chicken gravy, some yeah. sort of, just doesn't sound appealing at all. No, it sounds like something a gym a person would chug before they go into the gym. Ooh, for electrolytes and whatnot. That could be a good option. I feel like this is a great protein supplement for a lot of weightless lifters. Yeah. Well, let's leave it there for them. <laughs> you need the turkey in there mashed up for the protein. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think there's a whole lot of protein in gravy. It's just sodium and yeah. salt. and Lots of sodium. Ugh. Are Lots you guys nutritionists? No. <laughs> well, no. I know there's not a lot of protein in gravy. <laughs> I think we got that far, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, teach their own. Go and you can go ahead and, and go to their Twitter if it means that much to you. But the uh, I was a little off there. I said they needed. I meant to say they need to get to two hundred fifty thousand. They're nowhere near that right now. Yeah, they're not going to get that. No, I hope not. I'll um, vote fake. a million okay, times. Yeah, you can only vote once. There, you have to make a million fake Twitter accounts. I'll make a <laughs> Schmary Schmack. Oh, Schmary Schmack. She's uh, she's one of my favorites. When is she coming to visit us again? Uh, I don't know. Right. Well, I'll hold my breath. We'll be back with the last Nashville News Minute of the morning. Another cash cow code word on the way. And uh, Jameson Rogers with Luke Combs. What a great combination. Cold beer. Call him on